Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Skywatcher Evo Guide 50 ED. What is it? Well, it looks like a binder. It's a 50 millimeter f4.8 finder. It's in a finder bracket. You could just stick it in a telescope like a finder. Uh, but it's a little bit more than that. It has ED glass in it, which suggests that the optics are a lot better than a standard finder. And it's called EV Guide, so it could be used as a guide scope. So you could take the end here and put a guide scope like this and put that in there. Now it can be used as a photographic guide scope. But because it has this inch and a quarter adapter, it could also be used, and I've seen this done online, as a telephoto lens. So if you have a camera like this one, you can put this in here and you can take pictures through it. But because it has an inch and a quarter visual back on it, you could, in theory, also use it as a telescope. So you have an eyepiece here is a 25 millimeter eyepiece. You can put this in the back and you can use it as a telescope. But wait, there's even more. They make a dedicated field flattener for it, like this. And this puts in, uh, this you can put into the end here and you can use it as a dedicated astrograph. That is a dedicated astrophotography refractor. So the question, what is it? It's like five different things in one. This is very intriguing. I applaud Skywatcher for thinking outside the box. Let's check it out. So I have to say, this thing is very well made. This is a seriously heavy and substantial piece of equipment. I am weighing this here at 1.6 pounds. That's a lot more than a typical 50 millimeter finder that you're going to see out there. Now it does have this helical focuser. That's this green thing here. It has a focus travel of about an inch. And if you need to come out even more, this is an extension tube that comes out. They have to put all this stuff in here to accommodate the wide variety of things you're going to do with it. You can use it as a telescope, as a guide scope, as a telephoto lens. The back focus distance of all of those objects is going to vary quite a bit. Now, if you do use it as a telescope, you're not going to be able to use it with a diagonal. The diagonal just consumes too much light path and they can't bring the focus in far enough. So you're stuck with straight through on that mode. It comes with two different kinds of bases. This is the one that looks like a finder base. You just stick it into a telescope like a finder. There's another one that looks like a plate at the bottom so you could attach it to a mount of your choice and use it like a telescope. It does come with a set of instructions here. They're kind of sparse considering all of the things this thing can do. So you're probably gonna be figuring some of this stuff out for yourself. Some people don't like these helical focusers. This one is actually pretty good. The, Thread pitch is very fine, so you can get fine focus very easily. Also a nice feature is it doesn't rotate the tube in back of it like some of these helical focusers do. I didn't mind this thing at all. I thought it was pretty good. So we're back. By the way, it's like three weeks later. I had to try to use this thing in all the different configurations and purposes for which it was intended. As a finder, this is better than it has to be. If that's important to you, this could be a device for you. I don't know, I don't spend that much time looking through my finder. As a telescope, yeah, I mean, it's more interesting, I thought, than useful. You could look at the showpiece objects like the Andromeda Galaxy, the Pleiades, and the Orion Nebula. Once you start getting down into some of those clusters, you know, M35 through M38 in the wintertime, those things are starting to get fairly dim. Now, one thing that you always have to worry about with any kind of device that is both a photography device and a visual device is focus. Number one, will it find focus? And number two, how do you focus? Focus is sort of the final frontier and there are people who say that we don't really ever understand focus and I think I might be with them on this one. So I compiled this chart as to what you need to do to find focus and whether you need the extension tube in or out depends on whether you're going to use an eyepiece, whether you're going to be use a planetary imager or a DSLR like the Canons that I use. Now notice I was not able to find focus with my Canon DSLRs. I have five of these. None of them were able to come to focus with the field flattener in place. Now the field flattener is there only for photographic purposes. If you're only going to look through your telescope, you don't need it. But I looked in the manual and it specified that the maximum back focus distance is 17 and a half millimeters. And I knew DSLRs are way longer than that. There's a big mirror box in the way and in a DSLR, the center sits pretty far back. And in fact, the back focus distance on my DSLRs is somewhere in the 40 millimeter range. 
way too long. Now, if you have one of the new mirrorless cameras, those have a back focus distance much shorter than a DSLR. Canon specifies them at somewhere around 20 millimeters. Might be close enough to the 17 and a half millimeters specified in this device, except that you're probably gonna be putting a T-ring in place. Uh, that's gonna add another six or seven millimeters to the back focus distance. I don't think it's going to work. If any of you have gotten a DSLR or a mirrorless camera to work on this device, please let us know how you did it. But you know something, with the DSLR, when you take out this extension tube and put this in here, because the mirror box sits so far back, you're going to have to focus this thing almost all the way in to accommodate focus, but it just barely will do that. And even though I don't have the field flattener, there's nothing stopping me from just taking pictures with this anyway, and then aggressively cropping out the middle just to see what happens. Why not? Let's give it a shot. So some people have asked, what happens if you don't use a field flattener and you're supposed to? Well, what happens is the edges start to get very distorted. And I'll throw up a couple of images here. On a terrestrial image like this one, this is again through the Evo guide, no field flattener. It may not be immediately apparent, but the edges are not as sharp as the center. But unfortunately, if you take an astro photo, that is a very demanding thing to do with a camera. So we have this image here. Uh, ignore how bad that image is. This is just a test uh, run that I did. But look at how distorted the stars get at the edges. They get elongated, they get all distorted. And so what I have to do is aggressively crop out just the center to make it look like everything's sharp and in focus. So I did this, and I don't think these are great astrophotos, but just keep in mind, this is only a 50 millimeter finder style telescope. I suspect somebody with better equipment than what I have and somebody who is more skilled than I am could probably coax some better images out of this. If you have done so, please let us know. Okay, what about one of these? This is a planetary imager. Yes, it will find focus, but you do need the extension tube in place like this, and you can take images through it. So I started to wonder what would happen if I put the field flattener in place. Uh, nothing stopping you from doing that either. Here is the comparison between the moon image with and without the field flattener. You'll notice that unless otherwise specified, most field flatteners do act as mild bar low lenses. They magnify the image anywhere between five and 15%, which you can see here. No harm done. I actually think I like the one with the field flattener better because it's a slightly larger image. So in conclusion, I think this device is probably more of a luxury than a necessity. I suspect most of you buying this thing are going to use it as an auto guider, but if you have use of the other functions as well, this could be for you. So I also got this. This is the dedicated field flattener for the EvoStar 100 that I reviewed earlier. And in that review, I lamented that there were no good mid-priced field flatteners out there. I was using a cheap AstroTech not bad for $150, but this one is $275 and it is dedicated just to this particular model. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show this to you. This is the field flattener here. And when you take this off, this is the T-ring that you buy. So one caution I wanna to give to you, this is not a standard T-ring or it's a sort of standard T-ring, but this is the M48 style. That's the wider mouth version. If you buy a standard T-ring online, you know, a cheap one, it's probably going to be the narrower M42 type. So you do need the, the wider mouth adapter. I'll show this to you because the instructions make a big deal out of this. I don't think this is a big deal, but uh, I'll bring this to your attention anyway. This visual back here, this black piece, isn't actually one piece, it's two. So what they tell you to do is take off the bigger piece, leave that one on as a locking ring. So when you thread this on, you can then rotate the T-ring to your desired angle and then clamp down this way. And this is, a, let's see, this is my T3i. Let me just clamp this on here, and there you go. Okay, so another thing to bring to your attention here, many of these Chinese sourced refractors use the same or similar parts. This is an Orion ED80. It's a popular entry-level apochromat. But if you notice, they actually have the same focuser visual back there. And uh, they look like different telescopes, but they're actually from the same series. And it's the same thing here. So you can, in fact, remove the visual back from this one. Leave the locking ring there. This is the Skywatcher reducer corrector for the ED100, but it fits on here just fine. 
And you can just do this if you want. Take your camera, attach it, and there you go, you can try it. So now that we have the telescope with the field flattener and the camera installed, how does it look? Well, I think it looks pretty good. Let's take a look at this. So here's a frame, uh, ignore the quality of the image, this is just a test frame that I took. But you can see, look in the corners there, there is very little, if any, darkening or distortion in the corners. That's a pretty neat feat. This is a full frame sensor. It's pretty hard to get that kind of coverage on a sensor that large. I'm not seeing any distortion, I'm not seeing any vignetting, I'm not uh, seeing any hot spots around there, no internal reflections. And it really, again, the coverage there is really, really good. I have some Takahashi field flatteners that don't have that kind of coverage. Again, I was looking for a field flattener that was better than the inexpensive one that I had here. This one at $275, I think it's definitely worth the money if you're going to be doing any deep sky astrophotography with one of these telescopes. So if you're curious, this is the rig that I wound up putting together. I know it looks kind of like a weapon here, but we've had so few clear nights in this area that I had to fashion something so that I could take best use of the amount of time that I had when it was clear and when the moon was away. So, Got the EvoStar 100 and the field flattener and a modified Canon 5D Mark III at the end here. This is the EvoStar 50 and in the back of this we have a modified Canon T3i. Sometimes I use a light pollution filter and sometimes I don't and the auto guider is underneath. Now you'll notice with the Evo guide occupying the finder shoe, I don't have a conventional finder anymore. So when I, this happens, I get this thing out I call this my, my emergency finder. This is a Rigel red dot finder, and I have it tied to a piece of elastic that I got for, I think, 97 cents in the uh, fabric department at my local Walmart. And so what I do is I put this at the end here, like this, and I just sight along the tube, and that becomes my finder. Again, that's my emergency rig. I sometimes use that on my Questar, and Questar owners get really upset with me for disturbing the beautiful looks of that device by putting this on here, but hey, it works. So there you have it. It's an overview of the Skywatcher Evo Star 50 guide scope and the dedicated field flattener for the Evo Star 100. Again, if you're purely a visual observer, you do not need the field flattener. Hopefully this has given you enough information that you can decide if you need either of these devices. Anyway, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you soon.